Perfectly Me is a great tool for um, social emotional learning because we cover those issues. We talk about, you know, um, like I said, not only just about kindness, but also to your point about standing up for other kids, um, being empathetic, also understanding our own feelings when like we feel like anxious and sad and, and what that means and what we can do and how we can support um, ourselves. To, um, Welcome, Raquel. I really, I am so excited that you're here because when I stumbled onto your webpage, I was in love and I really want people to know who you are and what it is that you're doing. So welcome. Can you tell us a little bit about who you are and what you do? Sure. Well, first of all, thank you so much for inviting me. Hello, everyone. Um, so I'm Raquel Whiting Gilmer. Um, I actually am a native Baltimorean. I grew up um, in Baltimore County, and um, I um, I went to Roland Park Country School and um, was the, the daughter of a single mom. My mom um, worked super hard, worked three jobs um, to help provide for our family, and I think that that's where I got my work ethic from my mom. Um, one of the things that I really loved about my mom is that she taught me not only to work hard, but that no matter how little we have, we always have something to give. And so it really led to me having a mission driven focus in my life. So um, one of my big um, mottos in the world is I want to do well for my family and I want to do good in the world. And um, I was able to combine those passions with perfectly me. Um, but I'm, I'm, I have such a passion for our region, such a passion for our community and our, our children in our community. Um, and I think that's because of, you know, growing up here, my mom was a teacher. So I always had a focus around education and how important it is to um, support young people in their education. And um, I now as an adult, I, um, I'm the wife of an awesome husband. My husband, Michael, is an electrician, and he's amazing. And I have a six-year-old son named Mikey. Um, I like to tell people that I am what they call like an old mom. I had my son at 42. So um, when I go to when I went to kindergarten, um, if you heard that, that's him upstairs playing because he's off for today. But um, when I went to kindergarten, I'm when I dropped him off at kindergarten, I'm like the the old lady at the club because I'm I'm so much older than other people. But I felt very fortunate and blessed to have my son. Um, it took my husband and I a very long time to have a child. Um, five years of trying, and then we were very blessed with him. So um, I take being his mommy very seriously because I feel like it's such an honor. Oh, that's so beautiful. And congratulations. I, I, I've heard that it's so stressful and, and just exhausting to try and try and try. And here you are, you ha you're a mommy of this beautiful six-year-old and you're doing something amazing for the world. Um, yeah. And I'm pretty sure that that has a lot to do, right? With, with, yeah. uh, with him and, and how you present yourself to the world. So yeah. you have what's called perfectly me. Can you tell us a little bit about sure. uh, how you, what it is? Sure. So Perfectly Me, um, we're a company that provides content and programming to help kids become their best superhero self. We think every kid is a superhero out here in the world, but maybe they just don't have all the tools to bring that superhero out. And when we say superhero at Perfectly Me, we're talking about um, being a superhero by being kind and compassionate, being courageous, um, being um explorative about the world, um, having, being inquisitive, um, being fearless and just being awesome. I, I started Perfectly Me back in 2007 and really the road to that um, came from, um, and it's funny, I like to joke that um, I have a son now, but when I first started Perfectly Me, I knew I was gonna have a daughter. Um, this is before I even met my husband. I was like, I'm gonna have a daughter and her name's Hannah. Mm -hmm. And 
Um, I, um, I thought a lot about my journey as a girl into my teen years, and I struggled a lot with my self-esteem. Um, I was, I am heavy. I was heavy, and um, I struggled with, you know, not feeling, always feeling good about myself. Um, I struggled with um, sometimes giving in to peer pressure because I wanted to make friends. And um, I thought about my own journey and, and I've done a lot of work with therapy and um, done a lot of internal work to help build my self-esteem and self-confidence and thought about young girls growing up um, and having those same struggles and wanting to help give them the tools to um, make better choices than I did and the tools to be prepared for um, the challenges that hit you no matter what. It doesn't matter how great we are as parents. Like when um, our young people get to middle school and high school, it's just hard. And there are a lot of challenges that that face them. I know you have two teenagers, Ali. So I know that you know those challenges and how do we put them in the best position that when those challenges come, they're able to, they're, they can stand firm in themselves. So I started um, Perfectly Me Girls Clubs and we were running out of schools. And what was great is that we, we had a mix of, you know, entertaining activities to help the kids think about these issues around self-esteem, um, but not just sort of like feel good about yourself, right? Like, but we wanted them, like one of the activities that I love, we, um, we would plant gardens every year and the, the process of planting is such an incredible process because um, you plant the seeds and it takes a long time, right? But you've got to nurture them. You've got to like water it. You got to make sure it's in the right space to get sun. Um, there's a lot of nurturing that goes into it. Um, and sometimes the flowers grow and sometimes they don't. And just having that conversation of you could work really hard and something may not work out the way you want it to, but that's okay. It doesn't mean that, you know, you failed, um, but like sometimes something really beautiful happens. So that's an example of one of the projects that we did. In the course of doing the clubs, I wanted to introduce um, a comic to the club. And I looked around for something where the superheroes weren't, you know, didn't have like this freezing power or flying power, but just, you know, we're regular kids, but doing good work. And I didn't see anything. So, you know, what do most entrepreneurs do? You're like, well, I'll create it. And so I started um, our first group of superheroes, which um, were the awesome, perfectly me girls. And our first superhero is Zoe. And Zoe um, is like one of my favorite heroes because um, she struggled with her, she had struggles with her weight and didn't feel good about her size. She got teased because of her size. Um, there's like, this is her origin story. And in it, she, um, I'm looking for, she had an issue. Oh, let me find it. Where she, um, where she went to this play, she was in this play and she um, split the dress in her play and everybody laughed at her. Okay, here we go. Um, everyone was laughing at her and she felt really bad because everyone else was really skinny. And when they went for wardrobe, the wardrobe didn't fit her. And so I don't know if any of you have been in that position where, you know, everyone else seems like a certain size, but you're not that size and you feel self-conscious. So Zoe's gone through that challenge and her mom um, really stuck in there with her and helped her realize it wasn't about being thin, it was about being healthy. And so Zoe started doing karate and um, she started belly dancing. And so in our girls clubs, um, the kids, we had um, women um, martial arts experts come in and do demonstrations with the girls. And so we just have expanded um, that superhero, that idea, that superhero universe. So Zoe, Zoe the Courageous, um, and her courage helps her go out there and help other people feel good about themselves, like their bodies um, feel good about themselves, even if people, you know, think that they're different. Um, and, um, we're really excited because, um, like I said, we expanded, um, we introduced, um, we have six girls who are part of that awesome, perfectly me girls. They're diverse 
in their um, cultural backgrounds, but also diverse in their body size, diverse. Some of them have braces, some of them have glasses, they're diverse in ages. Um, and, but they all come together to defeat our villain and our villain in our story is adversity. And she's um, a villain from another planet. And she found a portal to our world that helps her that basically she can come in. No one can see her except our superheroes, but her whole goal is to help you not make you not feel good about yourself. Um, and so, um, you know, we needed more people to help fight adversity. So we added um, when my son was born, because I had, I, I realized like, I have to care about the boys too. Like, it's not just about the girls and how we can make them great, you know, women, but how do we help boys be great men? And so um, we introduced a character, Captain Kid Kindness. And so he's more so for like the preschool, kindergarten, first grade group of kids. And he talked, his storylines are all about kindness and friendship and um, how we can be inclusive in our friendships. Um, and then we introduced Introduced another group of heroes, the Perfectly Me Squad, um, and um, they're third graders that um, like talk about the environment. Um, they deal with issues around mindfulness, like how do I calm myself down when I'm having challenges? So everyone's still fighting adversity, but we've got more heroes in our universe to do that. Oh my gosh, I love this. How creative. And you came up with every one of these concepts. I did. Yeah, that's that's so impressive. I love it. And I know some kids might be like, oh, that's so corny. But no, I, I don't think it is. Or maybe it is for some people. Who knows? But no, that is so creative. Because of course, the way to any child's heart and attention is always something fascinating. And you have been able to capture that. And I'm just like, I look through your, the images and they're so beautiful. They're so well illustrated. They're very, I think, up to date as well. And, you know, um, I think it's brilliant because now when we're seeing so many like, uh, what is it called? Uh, UMC, is it? Uh, or oh, Marvel, Marvel and yep. Yep. comics. They're yeah. so popular and kids are looking for all sorts of different type of comics you're right in there. And it's really, really cool. Um, yeah, I also love that you cover different age ranges. And it's very important. And and of course, my gosh, the villain is adversity. How brilliant is that? I love it. It's interesting, because, you know, our content is pretty much for, you know, the four to 10, 11 year olds. And when you were talking about corny, it's really funny. I, um, when we were first launching the um, comics, I, we did focus groups and we did focus groups with elementary age kids and with um, elementary age girls in particular and, and middle school girls. And the elementary age girls got really excited. You know, they were, you know, there, you could just tell they were like, oh, I'm like, um, I'm like Casey, like the, these are all the awesome, perfectly me girls. And so someone would say, oh, I'm like Diddy. And, you know, and, um, and then when we did it with the middle school girls, they were like, no. <laughs> they had no interest. And so we realized like the, the older kids just aren't our target right now. Mm -hmm. um, but our goal is if we can work with those younger students before they get to middle school, that middle school will be a different experience for them. Yes. Oh, I'm so glad you mentioned this because that's one of the things I tell parents, especially when I'm being challenged about why should I teach children about bullying in, in elementary mm -hmm. school? It's interesting. I um, A couple of summers ago, we partnered with the Girl Scouts of Central Maryland and we provided our comics for their camp program. And I had an opportunity to go visit the, the camp um, one day and this little girl, she was in, she had just finished kindergarten and she came up to me and she was like, oh my goodness, because the the um, head counselor was like, she created J Zoe the Courageous. And she was like, oh my goodness, and so excited to meet me. And I said, well, I'm really glad you like Zoe the Courageous. And she said, like isn't strong enough. I love Zoe. Well, I had an opportunity to talk to her mom and her mom said that kids had started teasing her for being a little heavy. And this was in kindergarten. And I'm sure it wasn't, 
like what we think about as traditional bullying, um, but it was treating her like she was different, like something wasn't right. And so for her to have this hero who was also struggling with like her body image, I think was really great. I think that's why she really connected in so much because she was kind of like, wait a second, this, you know, okay, I can be strong and healthy even if I don't look like everybody else. Um, and, you know, I was, um, we were doing a, um, we were doing a session with a group of girls and there was a girl who was, um, these were girls were in fourth grade at the time. And um, there was a girl who was heavier and, um, and my husband was there and he said, you know, this is why, you know, you built perfectly me to help girls like her. And I said, and to help girls, like there was another girl who was, you know, thin and blonde. And I said, actually, it's also to help that girl because I don't want that girl to become that mean girl. And like, it, when you talked about empathy, it made me think about that moment where I was like, you know, it's not just about teaching, you know, people who may feel a little different to have confidence and love themselves, but it's also to help the kids who maybe are the popular kids so that they can be better people. So they can be the people who bring them in. So like with my son, we, you know, we tell him, you know, he's six and we've been talking to him since he was three about kindness and about how important it is for if there's a kid who's not being included, you bring them in. Yep. Cause he's like a very cute, popular, you know, athletic little boy. And we're like, you have responsibility. Like you were responsible. And um, what I loved, he went to a really inclusive preschool. So there were kids in his class with Down syndrome and um, autism. And one of the girls in his class who was um, severely autistic and did not, um, and had a one-on-one -on -one aide, her aide was like, Mikey is so good with her, you know? And it, that just warmed my heart that, you know, he's taking those lessons that we're talking about at home and he's bringing them out there in the world. And when he, I got his first report card for kindergarten and it said, Mikey is kind and he's compassionate and he's inclusive with his friends. I didn't need to read anything else. <laughs> so like we, we've incorporated the lessons imperfectly me in raising our own son. And so I can say with intentionality, it can work. Yeah, definitely. And I think I think that any parent can be successful in this area if they do implement this in small ways and on a daily basis, right? Um, it's also uh, about how you speak to a child and how you interact and how they see you interacting with other people. There's so many ways, but of course, mm -hmm. to make sure that we attract that um, their attention uh, and don't seem like we're always preaching to them. This is the perfect tool because it is something for entertainment while also teaching them such valuable core basic lessons that should be taught um, in every household and at every school. Uh, so tell me a little bit about uh, any other events that you have coming up. Sure. Well, we're excited. Um, so as I shared, we've done girls clubs um, for years and we're excited to, and we've also partnered with, um, like I said, the Girl Scouts with their camp program. Um, we are really excited. This is our first year of superhero camp. Woo! Um, so we are piloting um, superhero camp. Our goal is that um, our, our, our motto is that every superhero needs to be trained. Um, my, my husband Joe that um, when he watches the um, Avenger movies, he's like, why didn't they give Spider-Man more training? Um, <laughs> so, so we know superheroes need to be trained. And so at our superhero camp, you'll be trained in the super values of, you know, kindness, compassion, discovery, fearlessness, courage. Um, so lots of activities like martial arts, arts and crafts, um, yoga and mindfulness, um, nature walks, um, obstacle courses, and um, and this is our first summer. We're doing two weeks in partnership with Roland Park Country School, so we're a specialty camp of um, the RPCS summer camp program. And um, and if there are any of the amazing viewers of Dolly Talks, um, you can use the promo code. 
um, PM 2021. If you're interested in um, getting a discount on camp, if you're interested in camp, but um, we're hoping that our pilots go well um, this summer. And then next summer we will launch a full blown summer camp. Oh my gosh. That's so exciting. You know, I really don't see how it could go wrong. And I wish my kids were that age group. So <laughs> I <laughs> <laughs> but you mentioned, I want to backtrack a little bit because I realized you mentioned the girls clubs. So how does that work? Is that at schools or is that at a center? So at schools. And so um, if anyone is interested in bringing Perfectly Me girls to your school community, um, our website, perfectlyme.com, we have lots of information about our clubs. Um, we also now have Perfectly Me squad clubs that are co-ed clubs um, in addition to our girls clubs. Um, so really what's great is if a school community is interested, um, this can take place after school or even during the school day if the school is interested. Um, this is a big piece of people talk about SEL all the time right now, social emotional learning. And people have realized that um, school's not just about learning, you know, the, you know, the three R's, right? It's also about how do we socialize our kids to help them um, be great people in the world. And those social skills are so important. And um, Perfectly Me is a great tool for um, social emotional learning because we cover those issues. We talk about, you know, um, like I said, not only just about kindness, but also to your point about standing up for other kids, um, being empathetic, also understanding our own feelings when like we feel like anxious and sad and, and what that means and what we can do and how we can support um, ourselves. Um, so we have a team of people who help, including, you know, psychologists who help review our, our content. Um, you know, um, writers, you've mentioned the illustrations. I have to say um, our illustrator, Joey Ignacio, is absolutely amazing. She's been with us for um, six years now. Like We could not do this work without her. We we're so grateful for her. Um, and we have a bunch of moms on our team that are helping us um, think through some of the challenges challenges that their kids have experienced. So April Dodge is um, one of our great team members who um, helps with um, our content development and um, Amanda Lovely. So we've got a great team of folks that are really committed to um, just wanting something different, wanting um, you know, you see when you read stories about um, kids hurting themselves because of being bullied, when you read stories about um, just the unkind acts. And um, I think we can do something about that. We can turn the tide on that. Um, but once again, it, it's going to take intentionality and us all coming together. So Perfectly Me is a tool for parents and tool for schools. Um, and we know that you as parents are doing the hard work every day, that you're the one engage, ones engaging, talking to your kids, um, really um, encouraging them to be great people. And we just want to be your partner with that. So um, our content, our media, and um, our programs, whether it's camps or clubs, all about helping to do the work that you're already doing and doing such a great job with. Yeah. Oh my gosh. This is beautiful. I love it when something comes from the heart, you can really tell, um, not only because you're passionate about it, but because everything that you've created is very in intentional. It is beautiful. And, and it, it's working because you're going to schools and schools are calling you. And so yeah, it's, it's beautiful. I love it. And there's so much opportunity. So you have the clubs, you have the comic books, you have the summer camps. And then I see also that you have lessons and activities available for parents to use or teachers yeah, on yeah. your website. Yeah, so full of information. So there's no reason really to not be able to teach children about uh, being kind and, and building up that self confidence. I really appreciate you coming on to the show and sharing about Perfectly Me. It's beautiful. I'm just, I'm a huge fan of it. I mean, I'm not the little girl in me. <laughs> and I appreciate you for that. <laughs> so, well, and we, and I appreciate you and I appreciate um, what you're doing in the community and getting out information for parents. Um, as a parent, I know I'm always searching for um, good information, um, good tools. Like, so I appreciate what you're doing and 
what you're, um, how you're trying to get that out. So I want to offer, in addition to the camp promo code, if any of your viewers are interested, go to the Perfectly Me website and are interested in any comics or t-shirts um, that, you know, I'm going to have a special promo code of DT2021. Um, and that will be um, available to use until the end of May. And it, go, it will get you 10% off. Great. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. Do you have any last comments or pieces of, of advice for parents? So I think that the the main thing I would say is that um, your kid is a superhero. Um, and even though some days they might not act like it, I mean, my son, um, he... I tell him he's a superhero. We actually base the Captain Kid Kindness character off of him. And sometimes he doesn't live up to Captain Kid Kindness. But um, what we always say to him is that you can always turn it around. So remember that as parents, that even those days when our kiddos um, aren't living up to what we know that they're capable of, they can always turn it around and know that, you know, heroes falter. I mean, we've seen that in our favorite, um, whether you're whatever universe of superhero you love, um, we've seen our, our heroes falter, but um, we know that they turned it around the same way our kids can. So just, just keep that in mind. Cause I have to keep that in mind sometimes when I'm just like, Bubby, you're not being kind, you know, you know better than that, but um, he turns it around. So absolutely. I couldn't have ended this uh, conversation on a better note. Thank you so much, Raquel. I look forward to seeing you grow and, uh, and I can't wait to get my comic books in the mail. <laughs> Yay. Thank you. Thank you. Oh my gosh. Raquel's got me so pumped. It's like she brought the little girl out in me and I just want to go to that summer camp, but I know I can't. I'm <laughs> beyond those years now, but Hey, listen, if you know a principal who is looking for a program like Raquel's, because I, she didn't mention on here. Um, she has lesson plans that are available to the schools and remember, these lesson plans are also available online for parents. So if you're interested, check them out. But refer Raquel, if you like what you just heard, if you would love to see that at your school, give her, give her a call. So thank you so much for watching. If you like this video, please follow the Dolly Talks show, whether you're watching on Instagram, on YouTube, or anywhere else. And don't forget to come on to dalitalks.com for additional resources to sign up for our newsletters and to book any appointments if you want one-on-one -on -one coaching, if you want to hire me to go to your school or to your organization and bring any anti-bullying programs to your, to your community. Thanks again for watching. Until next time.